Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen Team, and in today's video, we're gonna take a look at how to build this header that has a background blur effect on it in Oxygen. So this is a pretty simple header with a few menu links, a logo, and then a call to action. So we're gonna rebuild this sticky header, and I'm gonna show you how to get this background blur effect really, really easily on your Oxygen site. So let's jump over to Oxygen and get started. I've already set up a basic page that kind of mimics the design on the example page I showed you at the beginning. So that's what we're gonna work with. Now we need to get started with our header. So let's add in a header builder. And that put it there at the bottom of the page. So let's just move it on up. And now we can get to work designing our header builder. The first thing we wanna do is make sure that it's set to sticky. So let's choose our header builder up here and we'll go to sticky and enable it. In the scroll distance, we want it to go sticky basically immediately. So we'll set it to one pixel. Now the sticky background color, we might have to come back to, but I'm just gonna set it to a transparent value for right now. And then we're gonna say sticky above 1120 pixels. That'll work pretty good. And then we probably won't want any box shadow here. So let's just set this to zero. Now let's get started adding some of our header elements. The first thing we're gonna do is just build a really simple logo out of HTML elements instead of importing an image. So we'll add a div and we're gonna give this some border radius and a background color. Let's do EF, 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 that's a nice neutral, almost white gray. And then we'll go to advanced borders and change the border radius to something pretty big like 50%. Now we're gonna add some text inside of that. Let's do a text element, and we'll call this something like O2 Studio. Now you can see that our pill shape didn't really work out, so we're gonna to have to revisit that. Let's select our div, go to advanced, size and spacing. Let's add some padding, let's do eight pixels, top and bottom, and then let's do 32 pixels left and right. Now to get a pill shape, 50% is way too big. So let's go back to border radius and let's set it to a pixel value. Something like 50 pixels looks pretty good. Now let's style this text a bit. We want it to be a little bit heavier and we want this studio text to be a different color than the O2. So let's select it and let's wrap it in a span and then we can change the color of that independently. So we'll go slightly lighter on that. And then on this one here, the O2, we wanna go probably darker than what we have. And let's up the weight to something like 600. That looks pretty good and pretty close to what we saw in the example. So let's go to advanced typography and step the font size up. It'll start at 16 pixels. Let's try 18 for this since it's a logo. Perfect. Now, finally, before we move on from this Logo div, we're gonna add some margin on the right. So advanced size and spacing, and let's set the right margin to 32 pixels for now. Now we're gonna add some links here. So let's select the header builder and let's just add some simple text links. These are gonna be our menu links. So we'll say projects, and then we'll duplicate that a couple of times and then we'll give this one a text of service. And then the last one would be about us. Now we need some space between these. So let's select one of them and go to advanced size and spacing. Margin right is gonna be something like 16 pixels. And let's do the same thing for the service link. Margin right, 16 pixels. And then let's change their color here to black. So that one will be black. This one will be black. And under normal circumstances, you would change all of these settings with a class. But since we're just doing a short demonstration here, I'm skipping the class step. Now, the last thing we need is our call to action over on the right hand side. And since it's also kind of pill shaped, I'm going to duplicate this div and I'm going to move it over to the right side of the header builder. So this is going to go right over here to row right. Perfect. Now, a couple of adjustments we need to make to this. First of all, we need to change the background color to black, and then we're gonna get rid of the span in this text, and we're gonna change the text color to white. Now we're gonna change it to say, get in touch. 
And then in the demo, they had a little green dot here in this button. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna go up and add a div and we're gonna to go to advanced custom CSS and set min width to zero and min height to zero. This just overrides the default width and height in the builder. And then we're gonna set the background to a bright green color here, something like that. And then we're gonna set the width and height to something like eight pixels. You can see there we got a little square. And now we wanna make it a circle by going to advanced borders and setting the border radius to a high value. We'll do 50% for this one. Now we wanna arrange everything. So we'll select the div here and set it to horizontal and we'll center everything. Now for the text, we do need to change the size a bit. Let's go back down to 16 pixels and then let's go to advanced size and spacing and we're gonna add 16 pixels of margin on the right. So now we have our basic header built out. Now for the next little bit of styling, we wanna add some space in this header. So we're gonna to go to the header, we're gonna choose the header row, which we have selected here, and we're gonna to go to advanced size and spacing and set the padding to 16 pixels on the top and the bottom. Perfect. Now we're ready for the next step, which is what we're all here for, is that glass effect on the background. So to do this, we do need a bit of custom CSS so we're gonna to go to style sheets and we're gonna add a new one and call it glass. Now, what we need to do is determine the selector that we need for this element. So let's refresh on the front end to see our header. And you can see it's sticky, it stays where we want it to. Now let's right click and inspect one of the elements in the header and let's just find something to target. So it looks like this is our header row ID. We can definitely use that since that's the element that is containing all of our header elements and is the thing we wanna apply that interesting background blur effect to. So I've grabbed the ID here from DevTools and we're gonna go back here and just use a hashtag, paste in the ID, and then open and close our curly braces. Now we're gonna use a CSS property called backdrop filter. Now you've probably used filter before, but backdrop filter allows us to apply a filter to the backdrop of an element. So for example, we could do something like invert 100%. And now you can see all the items that scroll behind our header are inverted. So it's pretty cool. It creates kind of a lens through which we see elements that have been run through this filter. But for this, what we need is called blur. And I've set it to 100%, which is gonna be way too high. We're also probably gonna need a background color. So let's do background. RGBA 255, 255, 255, and then 0.5 for the transparency. And you can see that that has now applied. And the reason our blur is not working is because we didn't actually change the value. Blur operates on a pixel basis and not a percentage basis, so we're gonna need to go to something like 10px. And you can see now that we get our blur effect. And in fact, we probably don't even need the background color there. But if you're trying to do like the glass morphism design style, you'll probably want a background color. So let's just keep that at a pretty low opacity. And then our blur is way too high. We want kind of a frosted glass effect. So let's step this down to five pixels. That's much better, but still maybe a bit much. Let's do two pixels, three, four. Let's try it at four. Let's save this and we'll jump up to the front end and see if we have accomplished our goals here. So you can see nothing too special about this header at first glance, but as you scroll down, we get this really cool frosted glass effect. And it applies to everything that scrolls behind the header, including images, text, all the stuff. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's how to create a frosted glass effect for your header in Oxygen. Thank you very much for watching.